Winnipeg, Manitoba's capital. This place has been a hub of human activity since before Europeans arrived in the Americas. Built around where Fort Garry once stood, the city has now a population of around 783,000. You would think coming into the city of Winnipeg would be the last thing I would want to do. But in fact, the animal that I'm looking for now is one that likes to call places like this home. Throughout Winnipeg are many parks. Many of these, such as this one, called the Kildonan Park, sit on the banks of the Red and Assiniboine Rivers and are the homes of many old oak and elm trees. And where there are trees, there are birds. Downy woodpeckers are common in the suburbs, and the old trees offer them and the other four species found in Winnipeg both nesting and hunting opportunities. Though the woodpecker's work on trees looks destructive, it is actually quite beneficial. It removes parasites from the tree and offers other animals homes. Bats, squirrels, raccoons, tree frogs, and even ducks have been known to take up residence in an abandoned woodpecker hole. What I'm looking for, however, isn't one of these animals. I'm sure by now you're probably wondering what animal I'm talking about. Well, it's a predator, and there certainly is an abundance of prey in parks such as this. Red squirrels are common in many suburbs of North America. They are not to be confused with the red squirrel of Europe, however, as they are a completely different animal. The red squirrels of North America are actually more closely related to chipmunks. Red squirrels are very territorial and very vocal and will voice their displeasure of any animal that is crossing into their territory, even large predators such as wolves and bears, and of me of course, as these ones were. Red squirrels are quite versatile and can be found in most habitats where conifer trees are present, as the cones are one of their main foods. Whilst red squirrels were a common sight during my search, grey squirrels were surprisingly scarce. Despite being native to eastern North America, grey squirrels are now a common sight in eastern Europe and the UK, where their introduction has displaced the native Eurasian red squirrel. The creature I'm searching for is grey like the grey squirrel. However, it is much better camouflaged, looking like a knot on a tree. They generally come out to bask in the late afternoon, before going off to hunt at night. If I keep my eyes peeled and search trees with south-facing cavities, I just might get lucky. Having such good camouflage offers two things. Prey won't see it coming, and predators won't spot it either. But that of course means that this will be quite difficult for me. You find one tree that looks suitable, but then you realize that there's an entire forest of them that could be hiding this creature. I did, however, find one that fit all the criteria. And now, my friends, it's time for a stakeout. So, I did in fact find it today. However, it poked its head out and it decided to go back into its hole, so I didn't get really any good footage. So, I'm heading back another time and this time I'm gonna get it. The animal that I'm in search of is the Eastern Screech Owl. Unlike most owls that can be found in the Winnipeg area during the winter, the Eastern Screech Owl is actually native year round, rather than drifting in from the north. This is one that I encountered several years back that was hiding in a wood duck box. They seem to come out in the late afternoon to sun themselves in order to warm up before an evening hunt squinting its eyes not because of the sun, but because its eyes are yellow, and having fully open eyes would alert predators to its presence. One of its main predators is in fact another owl of the suburbs, the Great Horned Owl. Also unlike most owls found in the Winnipeg area during the winter, screech owls are almost completely nocturnal. They choose areas like this along the river because quite a bit of their food actually comes from the water, and they have been known to catch fish and frogs right out of the river. Wood duck boxes also make a nice place to roost for the day. Okay, so I wasn't particularly successful with the bird that is roosting in that hole. 
but Kildonan Park and the neighborhood immediately across the Red River is uh, home to six pairs. So with any luck, I might be able to find another bird. This bird actually has two main color phases, the gray morph and the red phase that you see here. However, the gray morph is more common in the northern part of its range. So if the eastern screech owl can survive our harsh winters, why is its range limited to southern Manitoba? Well, there's actually a really good reason for that. Besides the fact much of the habitat is somewhat unsuitable, one of the main reasons is because northern Manitoba is home to two other owls of similar size, which are potential competitors. Hawk owls like this one are tame, diurnal, and relatively easy to spot, the opposite of the screech owl. My patience paid off though, and I did get a brief glimpse of the eastern screech owl as it came from its root. Fortunately, because these birds are so skittish, as soon as it noticed me, it went back into its hole. If you liked that video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. And remember guys, leave nothing but your footprints.